In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to set up your very own web server on your Raspberry Pi, a website that is hosted on your Raspberry Pi that you can log into, change, and access from an external IP address. So to start, the first thing we're going to need to do is update our Raspberry Pi. At your command terminal, type in sudo apt-get update. This could take a moment. Now it's important to note that the installation instructions depend on what operating system you're running on your Raspberry Pi. Here you can see I'm running the Jesse operating system. The alternative Raspbian distribution is the Wheezy operating system and uh, just take note now whether or not you're running Jesse or Wheezy uh, because it's important. Next type in sudo app-get install apache2-y and what this is going to do is install the Apache web server to your Raspberry Pi, which is what you need to be able to set up and host a website. So now the Apache 2 web server is installed, and theoretically we can log in to our website. My Raspberry Pi is connected to my router, and thus I can access it through my local area network. Typing in ifconfig, we see that the address of my Raspberry Pi is 10.0.1.7. Yours will likely vary. So just keep note of what your uh, address is of your Raspberry Pi. And going over to a different computer here on my iMac, we could just type in 10.0.1.7 and we should be able to log in. And here you go. It works. Perfect. This is entirely hosted on my Raspberry Pi. It looks very website-y, right? Great. So, this is not the website that you want. Of course not. And how do you go ahead and change that? Well, let me show you. Now, this is where it depends on whether or not you're running Wheezy or uh, Jesse. Navigate to cd slash var slash www and expand this. If you're running Wheezy, likely you will see index.html here. I am running Jesse, however, so I have to navigate into the HTML folder here where I could then see the index.html file. To be able to edit this file, we need to change the ownership of the uh, files for the Pine. What are we changing? We're going to be changing index.html. So this allows us to edit it. And now we can go in there and edit uh, the index.html file by typing in sudo nano index.html. And you can see that there is quite a bit of material here and changing a little bit here is not going to be very clear. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this file by typing in sudo rm index.html, which deletes it. And I'm going to create a new file by typing in sudo nano index.html. And what am I gonna say? I'm gonna say whatever my website is here and save that. And now when I try to access this, you can see that my website has changed to just displaying whatever content I put in it at that time. Now, if I wanted to be able to access this website through my external IP address, let's say I go to work and I want to access my website at work. Well, right now I can't because this is my local area network and uh, only computers on my router's network will be able to access this link. So what you have to do is set up port forwarding on your home router. Now I can't give you detailed instructions on how to do that because likely you have a different router than I do. But if you visit portforward.com, it'll take you to this site here. And if you go to routers, it then lists all the different makers of routers that are available. I happen to be using the Apple Airport Extreme or Express or whatever it is. So I click Apple there, Airport Extreme. Okay, great. And I can visit their default guide. And here you go, step-by-step -step instructions to setting up how to uh, do port forwarding on your router. So visit this if you don't know off the top of your head how to do it. The ports that you want to forward are port 80 and port 443. So I'm going to do that right now. So I want to create a new instance. I'll call it website port forwarding. I'm forwarding 80 and 443. 80, 443. 80, 443 and 80443. Great. So now I'll ask you to, uh, it'll likely ask you what IP address you want these ports to be forwarded to, and this is going to be the IP address of your Raspberry Pi. So I already mentioned it's 10.0.1.7, so I will save this and update it. And this will probably take your router a moment. So after you've set up port forwarding on your own home router, go to Google 
and this will tell you what your IP address is. So go to Google and type in what is what is my IP, and it will show you what your public IP address is. So copy your public IP address and open up a new tab and type in that IP address and there you have it. There is my website accessed through my public IP address. Now a special note, um, likely if you're viewing this tutorial on how to set up a website you're not aware of it already, this IP address will likely change. It could change in five minutes, it could change in a week, it could change in a couple of months. This is what is called a dynamic IP address. The reason why it's dynamic like this is to prevent everybody from hosting their own website out of their own basement. And uh, this is a trick that the internet service providers play to make more money. They will change your IP address and you have to likely pay a fee to be able to get what is called a static IP address, which will stay static and thus you always know uh, what it is. And websites like Google always know what it is so they can redirect traffic to a static location uh, that has this great content in your website. If you're ha hoping to have your website online and accessible through services like Google, you're going to have to pay for that static IP or list with a different company like a, like a hosting service to keep your website. Otherwise, you can go to uh, services that keep track of this IP address for you. You install some software, such as like if you go to DuckDNS, if you check them out, um, they have set up instructions here. What will happen now is you, you um, upload your IP address to them and they keep track of it and then you can type in something like pywebsite.duckdns.org or whatever the heck it is and you then can type in like an English link and it always points you to your Raspberry Pi at home. If you're not interested in having a third party keep track of what's going on, uh, you can write your own script file in Python that automatically emails you through a Gmail account your public IP address. You just check your email and you know the latest and greatest uh, uh, IP address that you have for accessing your Raspberry Pi. That's covered in a different tutorial. So in my next tutorial, I'll show you how to turn this website into a WordPress website uh, if you're interested in doing that sort of thing. See you then.